Well, as a disclaimer, I'm not an insane guy. I have to say that. So anything you can see, please think I'm normal. Or perhaps in a few years you would think this guy was normal. We'll see that. So um, I want the body. To, I want to make the body count. So I'm not going to tell you a thousand things about the internet, but you know that the web is 23 years old. Uh, the internet is something like 50 now. Yeah, old man. Uh, and you have 2.3 billion users which are already connected, and normally in 2015 you will have 3 billion users on the internet. First fact, you keep that in mind. Second thing, is it's a little uh, quiz. Do you know that guy? Who knows the, the eyes of that guy? No? No one? No, you know this one? Okay. So this is a guy who has a vision. He has a vision about the industry, uh, and some of you may, may know him, is Hans Vesberg, is the CEO of Ericsson. And what he's saying, and I think he has good reasons to, to think that, is that we will have 50 billion devices, connected devices, by 2015. So let's do a little bit of calculation. Do you like math? Who likes mathematics? No one? You're hiding? Okay, if I'm taking 50 billions, and I'm dividing by 3 billions, this makes... 17, no one was, uh, you were just reading, I know that. Okay, 17 devices per connected people. You know what that means? Okay, everybody's speaking about the four screens. Okay, so if we all have four screens, this means we still miss 13 devices. Okay, can you, yeah, connecting the things? Okay. So this means that here I have a few, I have probably four in my pockets. No, I, by 2015, in three years from now, I will, I will be carrying 17 devices. So we, you will have all sorts of devices, and uh, those devices mainly will be around sensors. And you, you've heard that before, sensors everywhere. So you will have all these little things which are piece of material, piece of electronics, that will be hidden everywhere, and you will wear some of them on you. What do they do? They produce data, as simple as that. And data is something you want to collect, to store, to order, in, under, in order to understand that. So you can store that in giant data centers. This is a very nice data center. Uh, you can also have something nice with, with data, like data visualization. This is the city of Krakow, which is the city of some, some of my ancestors. And, uh, this is what is happening on, on the beginning of the, of the summer for St. John Ferry, where the people are just going along the river. And here, we're simply tracking the phone calls and the text messages they're sending. And we're just visualizing that on the screen. So you see, the more they, they, they go in one place, the biggest firework we, we're having. It's just a way to visualize data. Another way to, to visualize data is to think about people, communities, people calling other people. And if you're just taking that and you want to map these communities, you will see that data and, and data visualization can recreate the truth and uh, the, the geographic truth of something. Because this map is the map of France seen by the communities we have around phone calls. And this is the official map of France with the region. You see that it matches. This means that I'm coding people in my region. You can have oval source of uh, visualization. This one is, uh, you remember the one with, with Mark this morning? This one is, is about Facebook activity and links. So you see, we, we see very well what is happening in Europe and in the US, but there are missing countries. You can hardly see Africa. You cannot see Russia or China. So this is a message for them. Please come on Facebook. Come and waste some time with us on Facebook. Um, this is, once again, data visualization. So data can be personal. Here I'm, I'm just sharing some personal data with you about my, my name, uh, my age, uh, uh, things I like, I don't like. You see privacy is almost off, uh, only on the wait. Uh, so this is really, really personal. There can be sensors everywhere about cities, pollution, uh, quality of, of the air, etc., etc. 
this is what we call ambient or environment sensors. You can have this kind of uh, prototype. This watch is just about uh, trying to understand uh, the quality of, of the air, uh, and every citizen can wear it, and then the, the data can be uploaded, and everybody knows exactly how the, the city is doing. This is called the green, green watch. There are some companies wh which have started to make a business out, out of this data. This is about all the data you can collect home. For instance, this company called AlertMe, they're just aggregating all this data, and then you can know things about your water consumption, about your carbon footprint, etc., etc. And by the way, with a single graphic, for, for instance, with the water consumption graphic, you can tell exactly the number of people you have in a, in a house. So this is really fascinating. By the way, who remembers my password? No one? Phew, I'm safe. Okay, I'm safe enough. So, data can be also personal. I was, I was showing that, but it can also be something about my patterns, uh, my body patterns, some biometrics, uh, because I can take any kind of data with my body about things I'm eating, this is food tracking, about uh, social interactions, uh, social interactions, for instance, the messages I'm exchanging with Ferran. You see that we communicate at night and I'm, I'm sending more emails than she's sending. But by the way, since the answers are sweeter than mine, she, it's perfect. It can be about water you drink, it can be about healthcare, etc. It can be about stress. I like this one to speak about stress. You just close your eyes, you're in the middle of a garden, this is summer, you can breathe. There's a little ray of sun which is just shining for you and you have a little breeze which is helping you with, the, with that. And then back to stress again, because I'm going to share Ferran's Cook personal data with you. <laughs> I just have to click on the right button. Yes, but privacy is on. <laughs> privacy is on, sorry. So, just to show you some devices working, I'm wearing here a little device called the Fitbit. It's a little clip. It says that I've been doing 2,900 steps today, and simply by walking here, I have the measurements, and it's changing, and I can have the number of steps I'm making, uh, I, I can have uh, the stairs I'm climbing, I can have many different things, the number of hours I'm sleeping, etc. This is what we call a hero device in our industry, because a lot of people have them now and trust this kind of device. Every, every week I receive a dashboard on which I have the number of steps I've made, uh, the, the time I've been sleeping. I also see that I've been doing better than my friends here. I've been working more steps than they, they have. I can go into details. Here I have some elements around my sleep. I used to be just like an insomniac. I thought I was an insomniac because I was sleeping four to six hours a night. I was aggressive, I was getting sick. Now I'm sleeping from seven to nine, sometimes less, six, 40, six hours, 43 minutes. But I feel better only with that, only sleeping a little bit. So this little device is helping me out to understand if I'm sleeping enough or not. Sim as simple as that. I can go in any details, see uh, if I'm doing well. You see that I, as I was wearing that for uh, 18 months, I've been doing 5 million steps. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as the song is saying, and every little step I'll take, I'll take for you. Oh, I, I won't use the, the first name since it's not the first name of my wife, so I cannot sing the song as a... But uh, you see that here I have some other data about my weight. You see privacy is almost off. <laughs> but you won't, you won't know the figure. So I can have things. I, I should do 10,000 steps a week. This is something which is known from the 50s. You have to do 10,000 steps a day to feel well. So stop taking the cars and the lift, etc. Please do some steps and you feel better. I, I have to practice. I have to work better on, on Sundays. I have to be uh, walking in February and September, etc. This is why I was saying I'm a normal guy, because I don't think I'm, I'm spending the whole day working on that. So this is a scale. This is a, a, a within scale. It's a French company doing that. This is a scale which is just connected. This means that your weight can go on your smartphone, but you can also share your weight on Facebook. 
you choose whether you want to do that or not. So they even made a, a baby version now. When you have a baby born, everybody knows that uh, how, how uh, the, the children, the, the child is doing. So there are plenty of other devices. Here I'm carrying a, a up, up jawbone. It's another bracelet which is counting the steps and, and which is just waking me up in the middle of the night or in the morning, depending on that. Even Nike is doing one with the fuel band now. So you have plenty of devices. And even if I'm taking my, my smartphone here, uh, here I have a little application which is made by a company called Azumio. And normally, if I'm just putting my finger here, I can measure my heart rate. I won't be spending 10 minutes doing that, but uh, you will try it yourself. After that, you hear a beep, 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 meaning uh, I'm leaving now. <laughs> I'm alive. So you will see that plenty of sensors, plenty of devices which are about you, etc. There are probably 50 devices so far which are measuring things. Uh, and that you can find. What's the interest of that? It's as simple as the fact that you can know what you can track and you can enhance what you can know. So this is why we have some interest for this data because we can enhance things that we, we can, we can uh, track and know. It's just about knowing yourself because uh, if you know yourself, perhaps you can start enhancing some of the elements which are around uh, the perception you will have of yourself. For instance, there is a company called Quantic. It's a German company. They're just providing a health score. This means they, they calculate a health score based on all these devices in order to tell you whether you're doing good or not. This means if you're 1,000, you're in perfect condition. If you're zero, you're literally dead. As simple as that. This is what we're doing also. We're working on something called Body Guru, which will just aggregate all this data into one single app on the smartphone, just to have you the, 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 to, to give you the aggregation of all this data in order to know what you're about. In this industry, we have a little community which is growing. Every year in the, in the US, there is an, an event called Quantified Self. There are communities all around the world, and you have 500 people already starting to innovate, work together in order to bring that. And there is also some standardization occurring in the Continua Alliance, just in order to have all these devices uh, sharing some standard and uh, being able to aggregate the data together. So you. Just to, to, uh, to go beyond that, I would like to share a little bit of vision around the future. Uh, if we're all taking this and this data into consideration, it's probably because we want to understand new correlations. And uh, just to un understand the, the interest of that, I would say that, uh, for instance, if you're suffering for, from a very rare disease, uh, maybe you will notice one day by tracking your food that you feel better when you're eating some peanut butter. So you will feel better with butter. And it's, uh, it's, it can be completely crazy, completely silly in terms of telling the doctor, the doctor that you're feeling well when you eat peanut butter. But that can be scientifically proven if you track it by yourself. So understanding these, these new correlations, it's the idea of putting all the data, all the personal data in a cloud, in a big personal cloud. You know, we are speaking more and more of this big personal data, first of the big data, which is all this mass of data which is created, created around the internet. Well, most of this data can be personal, and if I have the trackers, all the things which are helping me to track all this data, then I can understand something which is helping me to develop some kind of personal science. This means, uh, this one was not supposed to come, uh, personal science is an even personal medicine. This means that I'm probably the best person to know exactly what I need and how I feel. So if I'm tracking my mood, my emotions, many things about how I'm feeling inside, outside, my skin temperature, the dryness of my skin, anything I can, I can really track, I have a giant mass of data, and maybe one day we'll have enough power to 
understand the correlations between these pieces of data and help me being and feeling better. And uh, maybe one day we'll bring a, a tricoder. So you remember Star Trek, they were, uh, when, when the doctor was coming, here it's the contrary, it's Mr. Spock, because the doctor is ill. So, uh, but normally, uh, the doctor was coming and saying, oh, this guy is not feeling well. Uh, they had all the, the body constants in the, in the machine. So this is what the industry wants to recreate, this tricoder. And the interest of that is, is simply to say that uh, if I'm feeling better, if, if I'm bringing a better me, then probably I can, if we're all bringing some better me's, then we can have a better world. And, uh, and this is as simple as that. And with a better world, we can even sing together. Like, I see trees so green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Whoa.